So every idea becomes, uh, I mean, comes to life. What you see today is at least about five years old. Right. right? That's, that's the standard model. In my case, it's been even longer. Uh, the first time I ever sold the idea of an adventure park was to Sri Subhuto Vaisara, who was my client. And I did a presentation to them, how can we make 100 villas an acre and how can we set up an adventure park? So that was, that was years, years ago, way before the adventure ever happened. Right. And then I got an opportunity, of course that idea was not taken by the clients then. Uh, then I got an opportunity in 2008 to take a small piece of land over here and build a couple of villas. I wanted to make a vacation home for myself and the family. And I was one somewhere where I can go to bike riding. I'm crazy over bike riding. And uh, horses and cycling and you know, right. all the good things in life that we only right. see in movies. But true. unfortunately, true to our lives, no matter who, how big a person or small, we cannot as a family go cycling anywhere across in our cities. Yeah. Nor can we go horse riding. So true all that. those as dreams, ATV rides, you only see Salman Khan riding in a movie. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you exactly. cannot do it. Because when you go out to try to do, you get some cheap Chinese shit across. You never get, you never get the quality of life satisfaction. Right. I love my plants, I love my animals, I love the nature, I love my water, I love my fire. Right. So for me, these are the elements of life that really put my mind, body and soul in sync with, with no matter what pace of life I'm living. Okay. okay, so this place gives me all of that. But my basic question was, what is the foundation inspiration for you for this place? For data. For data. For data. Yeah. So now, I'm coming on to it. Right. So, adventure started. Okay. And because I could put my dreams of adventure, what I wanted to do for myself, right. into reality and set up India's first extreme adventure park. Right. Okay, this was never imagined by me as an extreme adventure park. This was my own hobbies put together. Okay. There were radio control planes, everything that all right, of us right. want to do. True. Okay, so that became my passion, became my business. Yeah. That experience, then we added our first resort to it, which is Camdala Resort. Okay. Then we went into hospitality in a different way and understood that people love the experience. So Camdala Resort was just tense, but people would, it would be sold out because people love the experience. So people would not go to a five star right. in Rajasthan, but value Camdala more than yeah. that. Reason, reason was the experience. That's what taught me experiential hospitality, the practical. Right. One resort turned into the second, second turned into the third. Now we are just this month finishing our sixth resort. Where you say that data and research you're talking about right. is the fifth resort. Okay. After we put up a garden villa resort. Because people are devoid of gardens. Every room should have a garden. True. So we put up a garden villa resort. Okay. Now experiential hospitality is what we think in the last 10 years we've garnered enough knowledge. Data is a byproduct of experiential hospitality. Because data is also all about experiences. That is a fifth resort. Data is a fifth resort. Okay. And that's all about experiences, right? Right. And how how true do you remain to the theme you select? So if you select a military theme, how in-depth you research and how do you do things which are out of the box, which are not available otherwise? So a person would think military, some tents, some military tents, some right. living in the jungle, some bunk beds, some makeshift toilets, some kitchen dormitory. So data is again my passion. I've been a, all of us are passionate Indians. All of us are patriotic. I've always been slightly little more and, and always felt the, the, the kind of pain of not being able to do anything with that patriotism because I couldn't go and join the armed forces. I can't do anything with it. So the best way I can salute our armed forces is by employing our army veterans, all ex-special ops operatives. This is my next question actually. And secondly, to the best of my knowledge, uh, you have been into some other businesses before this, I guess. So we've always been in the business of design. Design, yeah. And uh, so corporate design, interior design, luxury design, these are the things that we've always been involved with. That's okay. our traditional business. Manufacturing is what we are into. We manufacture furniture. Now we've extended the scope and we manufacture a lot more of the things. We are launching that business in the next two months. It's going to be known as Della by Street. Street. That's a brand. Right. And we are manufacturing in Tupiano everything for the world of interiors. Right. Uh, so sanitary wear, tiles, faucets, showers, jacuzzis, furniture, lights, right. carpets, rags, right. tableware, paints. We're doing everything across. Yeah, because I saw that. So those products are all manufactured by right. So whatever you okay. see in the resort, every product is available for sale. And I guess it took five years to make that data? No, data, data was little less than three years. Uh, and, and the overall concept. It's been over five years and it, it took three years. Right. It took three years to execute the concept. Right. The idea has been proving across. Right. And 2611 onwards, I wanted to take revenge and settle my score via the medium of training as many people as possible. So okay. revenge can be in a, in a positive way, negative way. So for me, I had to seek what had happened to us. Right. And, and every time a person like you is trained and comes out of data, for me, that's a revenge taken. So more and more people, capable Indians coming out of data trained, 
will not be a liability in an adverse situation, in a terrorist attack or an actual uh, adverse situation, will be an asset to our country. This is also a way of spreading patriotism. Also, igniting passion for the country is what data does, which is a byproduct. And I simply love it. We made it into our absolute motto to make sure we ignite passion for our country in as many people as possible. So we want to act as a catalyst. All of you are, all of everybody is a patriotic. We just want to ignite that passion slightly. The first start of the data. Igniting passion. One more thing. It's not, uh, it's apart from the, you know, all these things. What was the total cost of making data? <laughs> Financial question. Uh, cost of this making data. Okay, so it's a it's, uh, little less than 30 crores. Less than 30 crores? Less than 30 crores of investment across into data. Uh, that is because we have a full-fledged infra over here. And right. this is the backup. Right. Standalone resorts in India to run and make is impossible. Yeah. So you can't you can't you can't give five star luxury with twenty five rooms and thirty rooms is not possible because we are already now two hundred and seventy rooms between our six resorts. Okay. Is wow. why we can we are we are having ten banquets, six restaurants, we're having a staff strength of one thousand six hundred and fifty employees, of which nine hundred are local employees. So because of which we are able to run an organization like this. Right. Because the data requires a rock solid backbone. Right. So this is the backbone of data. And that's why it's a remote operation. And to have any kind of a remote operation, you need to have a base camp which is rock solid. So Dela is a base camp for data. And when across India we plan to do it, at some point in time we want to do it in Delhi, outskirts of Delhi, we want to do it outskirts of Bangalore, outskirts of Goa. These it are the three be places. For sure. It is, it, is, it is a lot more people across India. And also, uh, military tourism didn't exist. I'm happy and proud to say that we are the pioneers in military tourism. And so military tourism word itself is non existent. And we are the first ones to do this resort or buy the medium of this resort. If we start with the scheme of military tourism within the hospitality sector, it's a plus plus, it generates local employments, it generates employment for our army veterans. Yeah. Uh, so it, it serves both the purposes. You are igniting passion for the country, it right. serves the third purpose, it's training people. It's training people and it's something which is good for the mind, body and soul, it's good for the environment. So you are you are actually doing the best of everything in this brand. So for me, it's less of a business, it's more of a complete satisfaction and, and kind of an endorsement of whatever we are doing is holding good on all four counts. And if the byproduct is we make some amount of money on it, it's worth it. It's, it's worth money it. well earned. It's worth it. It's really worth it. Thank you so much, sir. Pleasure. Thank you so Pleasure much. talking to you. See ya. Pleasure.